Today we are going to take a look at what I believe is the best adjustment layers plugin for Final Cut Pro and it's totally free. Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Pro. I am so excited to be back with you here on the FX Factory channel. So firstly, what is an adjustment layer? Well, if I jump into my titles here and locate my adjustment layers, I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag this adjustment layer down to the timeline. So the way an adjustment layer works is any effects that I apply to the adjustment layer will affect any underlying layers. So I have these video layers here. These will be affected by the purple adjustment layer. So if I push command six to get into my color correction tools, I can add in a whole bunch of contrast just so we can get a good idea of the changes it's making. And now if I play through, these other clips are going to have those same changes applied. So that works with any effect that's in Final Cut Pro. That is usually where the average adjustment layer plugin ends. You have this handy tool, it's great for quickly applying effects across the board. But this adjustment layer plugin from FX Factory has 11 more tools that I'm going to show you how to use. The first three we're going to talk about go together. So we have the color, the defocus and the duo tone. These three are really great for when you need to add text into your scene. The first of these three is the color adjustment layer. So quickly I'll drag in the color option and you will see if I play it out, it has this nice animation of a color solid being applied across the scene. You can of course jump into your title parameters. You can change whether it has a build in so it could just be a regular solid, but then it animates out at the end. You can also change the color of course and you can also change the shape reveal. So if we want it to be more rectangular, we can do that. In tandem with that is the defocus tool. What the defocus effect does is it softly blurs the background. So again, if we were to add text, I'll push control T to add in some text and I'll type out a quick title. And the nicely blurred background is making the text really, really pop. And of course, in the defocus filters, we can change whether it animates in. You can also change the defocus amount. But on top of that, if we were to drag the duo tone layer here, we can see that the duo tone actually adds this really nice color contrast to our scene. And that also animates in as well, just like the defocus. So you can utilize this to quickly add a really elegant looking background to your text while still revealing what is underneath the text. Now, of course, we can change the intensity on this duo tone filter. We could change our colors. So it could be pulling from turquoise and pink, and we could change the contrast amount if we want, as well as the pivot. And we have the options to enable smooth contrast, luminance only, and clip color values. The next one I'm going to show is the double exposure effect. The double exposure effect is often seen in music videos. It's really cool and unique. With it on the timeline, go ahead and select your drop zone. We'll jump into our browser here and we'll find a shot. Usually it works if it has a lot of contrast or something along those lines, but you can definitely get as experimental as you want. And we're going to click here and apply that clip. So now you can see there is a nice blending between the two shots. It's not opacity, it's blending in a different way. You can see that the colors underneath this are actually more saturated and that is because it is using the overlay blend mode. We can also change this over to stencil alpha and see how the guy is actually cutting out the background. You can definitely get really crazy and it's just a ton of fun to play around with. Next, we have the two up adjustment layer. So again, bring that on our timeline. You can see the left hand side actually has what is on the timeline happening underneath. And then the right hand side has the ability for a drop zone. So if we go back into our browser here, again, I'll select the two up and I will select maybe her feet walking on the beach, we'll push apply clip. And then if we're not quite happy with the placement, we can of course drag on the drop zone X value here and get it over to the correct position. So now we have this really quick split screen with very minimal effort. And if you want to, you could change it over to horizontal to get this more horizontal looking split screen, just like so. Also, if you want to flip it so that we have her on the bottom and the feet on top, we can change the placement here and that will flip those two options. 
The next tools are for utility purposes. Let's go ahead and start with the comment marker. So bringing that on the timeline, you can see it's a very short title. Now, if I select it, we can jump into the title parameters here and we can make comments, add more blue in the color grade. And now if I were to pass off this timeline to another editor, they could go through and find my comment marker here. So you might be asking yourself, why don't I use the built-in to-do items in Final Cut Pro with option M, and you definitely could do that. However, these markers are not movable within Final Cut Pro. So with these comment markers, you have the ability to quickly move these around as well as it's much easier to add an entire paragraph statement here on the right hand side rather than double clicking on this to read out the text. It's just another way to quickly add information to your timeline that you can share with another editor. The drop zone adjustment layer is very useful in many circumstances. Typically, if I were to bring in a logo, let's say I wanted to use another great plugin that's on the FX factory store, add motion. I'm gonna drag that onto this PNG. Now you'll see a problem. This logo has a one by one square aspect ratio, which means that with this particular effect, when it gets to the edges, it's actually going to cut it at the edges, which is just an unfortunate thing that Final Cut Pro does. However, oftentimes you can fix that by adding in a compound clip with option G, and then we add in our effect, and then you animate it just like so. But the problem with this is, let's say I accidentally made the logo too short in duration. Well, when it's in the compound clip, we cannot extend it any further unless we jump inside the compound clip, extend it out, jump back out into the main timeline, and then re-extend it. So it's just a bunch of hassle. Whereas if we were to use the drop zone edition of this, let's again select our drop zone, jump into our browser here and apply the logo. And then we can of course change the media scale so that it fits. We can add the add motion plugin to this very easily. It will now quickly animate in, no problem. And I didn't have to put it inside of a compound clip. Plus if it was way too short, I can extend it out as much much as I need. It also has the ability to enable a drop shadow very quickly which is just another tool of convenience for you. So the next adjustment layer is the guides adjustment layer. In Final Cut Pro, there are some guides that are useful. So if we go on up to our view, we can enable the show horizon tool. However, you'll notice that this island is actually slightly above the horizon line in Final Cut Pro. Now you can eyeball it and we could straighten out this shot a little bit just like so and scale it. And sometimes it works by eyeball. But there are circumstances where that won't work and it's much easier to actually have a straight line across. And that is where the guides come in. If I enable the guides, I'm going to go ahead and disable the show horizon. I can drag these guides to the proper position so I can take them straight to the horizon as well as if I wanted to line up something vertically, I could do that as well. Plus one extra benefit is the built-in guides in Final Cut Pro are stuck to being yellow, whereas these ones we can actually change to any color we need. So if you have a very yellow background, those original guides might not work for you, but these ones will. The transparency adjustment layer is very interesting. Anything underneath this adjustment layer is going to be completely transparent. You might be asking yourself why this is useful. Well, Occasionally, you'll run into this weird glitch in Final Cut Pro where an item is about one pixel too small. So if you look right here at the bottom of my shot, you'll notice that there's actually a line from the underlying shot, which is super annoying to deal with. And a lot of the time, you'll need to scale it up by 1%. But if you don't wanna scale it up by 1%, then you can take the transparency adjustment layer, drop it underneath, and you will be good to go. The widescreen adjustment layer is so handy. Now, unlike the built-in widescreen tool in Final Cut Pro, this one is actually fully animated. So if I play through, the widescreen is going to nicely animate into my scene, as well as I have the ability to, of course, change if I want it to be 255 by one. I can change my border size, my offset, but with the addition of it being animated for me. So that saves you a lot of time dealing with cropping and animating those keyframes. If you don't want it to animate, you can also disable the build-in and build-out, and you won't have to deal with those animation parameters at all. 
The last utility is definitely very experimental, but you can get some really interesting looks. I could definitely see this being useful for maybe a music video or some other trippy effect that you might need. So I'm gonna drag on the alpha levels and what this is going to do is select specific colors and make them fully transparent. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and disable the color reduce filter. So what I'm gonna do is drag down the alpha green elements. Then I'm gonna take this other video clip and apply it above the alpha levels layer and then selecting the video clip of the woman we're gonna change the blend mode over to behind so now this cliff is actually in front of her now you can see this is just creating a very interesting looking effect very music video-y. Um, it's not quite transparency, it's not quite a keyer, it's just its own look and you can definitely have a lot of fun using this. So that one is very experimental, but I recommend that you try it out and I would love to hear in the comments some other ideas that you guys have about this very adjustment layer. So that wraps up the video. Make sure you install this adjustment layer plugin. It is absolutely free. There's a link down below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me here on the FX Factory channel. Consider pressing the like button, consider subscribing, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.